Get your cup of Joe. Tell your significant other that she's gonna have to wait. It's time to watch Two Guys Garage. Yeah, we've got a lot going on today in the shop. We got some DOS work, some custom wiring. So you guys stick around. We're gonna have some fun. We'll meet you back in there. All right, we got our 66 NOAA project. It's kind of been neglected, so today I think we're gonna to try to catch up and get a lot of work done on it, get it on the road sooner. It's a shame to have a 355 motor, fuel injection, you know, auto trans, all just sitting there doing nothing. I know it. So as you can see, we got everything in the front, you know, the engine's in, the trans installed, we got the headers on, that's about it. So we got a long way to go, yeah. and today I think we're gonna to try to get some of this front end mocked up, because I think it's starting to do some wiring. Yep. So we can kind of figure out where that wiring is going to go. Well, yep. we got the front end on, maybe we'll do the cooling pack, get the fan mounted, get it wired up. And uh, I think maybe Brian will crawl underneath there and start working on some of that exhaust. Well, make me do the crawl spot. I'll see how that's going to go. All right, we're putting a new radiator in. It's going to have a new custom kind of location and mounting, but we kind of got everything else around. We got our outer fenders, our inner fenders in, our core support. So we can start mocking this up and figure out how we want to mount it. Yeah, what we came up with, and we'll show you in a sec, but once we put it into the core support, we've got a new radiator that's aluminum. That's going to cool real nice. We've got a new core support that has, you know, no mounting, because this isn't the original style mounting. So what we'll do is mark some holes to get Bird to mark those. We'll put uh, nut certs in, and then preferably mount it as a rubber mount, because anytime you've got a radiator, if you can keep it good and soft, because these things are fragile, that'll uh, give you a lot better longevity. So we'll kind of set this in. You can kind of mark where those are gonna run. Okay, you got it centered where you want it? Yep, that's about right. Yeah. Now, the, we've already checked our fan clearance, so this is our electric fan we're gonna add. You can see that gives us just enough uh, room for the water pump and then later obviously if we want to get crazy we could build a custom shroud around it and really pull perfectly off of it um, at this point we just need to go ahead and get a location and uh, get those marked and once we pull this off I'm gonna go ahead put our nut certs in and then birds gonna get to the wiring I believe yeah now that I know where kind of this is we've got our panels in I can start putting my uh, wiring system in from the inside and start figuring out where I'm going to route it, start setting up, you know, fan relays and stuff like that. So to see where we're going to start with this project, follow me over the bench and we'll get it all laid out. And you see we pretty much tore this Nova down to the bare bones. It's the perfect time to go through your wiring, you know, make sure it's still good, which a lot of times on these cars it's shot. So this wiring, gone. So we need a good starting point. When we did our barn find on our Camaro, it was pretty much a stock car that just needed a little bit of love and refreshing. So it was great. We had a factory fit kit from American Auto Wire. All we had to do was literally unplug, plug things in, everything was good to go. We did a van. We did Bender's van. Well, that was more of a universal. So we could start you know, with a universal setup and kind of route it like we needed. Well, this is almost stock, but not quite. You know, We've got a, a Nova, which is great, and we'd like to start with everything that Anova has, all the right lengths and connectors, but we've added a lot of content. Electric fans, electric fuel pump, you know, we might throw AC on it, maybe a high output stereo. Well, a stock factory harness isn't going to support all that. Now, American Auto Wire has a sort of perfect solution. It's their classic update. So I've got all the right connectors made from most of the original GM tooling, you know, to plug in everything that's right from the original factory stuff, whether it's my headlamps, tail lamps, you know, all my dimmer switches, ignition switches, but I've got all this extra capability in my fuse block, you know, all the way through my bulkhead connector to kind of add on the stuff that I need. All right, we're gonna start right here at the heart and soul, this fuse block. This is ATO, real compact. It's real easy to mount up there, and you've got all your labels here. So you've got all the circuitry and all the amperage capability for things like, you know, power seats, power windows, AC, you know, a lot of things that we might add to this car. So it's a great starting point here, and I've got all the, the wires are labeled, all the connectors, so it's easy to start just trailing them through the car and connecting everything that you're going to leave stock, and they've upgraded this bulkhead connector, so they don't use the old twin 
you know, GM style, twin lock GM style. It's the 56 series heavy duty. So let me get this stuff mounted, get all the easy stuff clicked in place. Then we can start adding some of that functionality we talked about. If you remember at the beginning of the show, we mounted our radiator to the core support, marked our holes. Now we've drilled for our uh, nut certs, and I'm gonna show you how to put those in. Normally you would buy a tool, kind of like that works like a rivet gun, to put it in. But we're gonna show you kind of a poor man's way. So you hold the top, tighten the bottom. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see. And it's pulling itself up. All right, now it's about ready to come out. Pull it out. Now you have a nut in aluminum. Pretty cool. All right, we've got to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Now welcome back. I'm under the dash of the snow over here, and I've got our fuse box installed real nice, and I've got our bulkhead connector. So that means now I can start working on the other side of this firewall. Now a bundle of wires. It can look pretty scary, but all you got to do. Let's check them out, and they got a label on them, so you know exactly what they are, like this one, power seats. And this one, electric fan. Well, what do you know? It goes right up here to this bulkhead connector. So let's go on the other side of that connector. I'll show you what we got going on on the engine side. Bam! Looking good. Yeah. All right, so we should be able to drop this in. Oh, I'll hook you up with some fasteners. Now, we mounted this thing with zip ties that come with it. They just lower. go right through the core which is really easy. It's literally about five minutes worth of work. And we've directly mounted a flush mount, which goes straight to the radiator. Now, if you had time, you could build uh, a shroud. You know, you could pull it off, really give it some vacuum that would come around. But you know, a direct mount, it allows you to pull all the way around the section. And then when you get up to speed, you've got air that are, it's gonna blow by. So, you know, for a quick application, something like this, Works pretty sweet. Yeah, and if you get some troubles with heat, you can always try to build yourself a fan shroud, pull a little bit more air across the entire surface when you're idling around. Now this bulkhead connector is nice. I've got a split here. This is my engine bundle. So this is gonna be everything on the engine side and I'll string that out nice and methodically, patiently. You know, it's gonna have everything from, you know, my ignition wire, my oil pressure sensor, all that's gonna be in here. Well, this side is my whole front end. So this is gonna be my headlights, turn signals, my horns. So these are gonna route, you know, maybe along this inner fender well. We'll put some cushion clamps, we'll wrap it all nice and neat at the end. Um, or I can even maybe tuck it behind, put a little grommet, hide it underneath so you don't see it. So I've left myself a little bit of extra and I've routed myself up here to my fan relay. Now you remember on the Camaro show, a relay is a remote switch. And the reason to do that is I can put light gauge wire inside the car, but out here I can put heavier gauge high amperage right by the fan. So how this works, Got my relay socket here, and remember from the Camaro. Yep, I can apply a little bit of power. I can hear the switch clicking. I know this guy works. I can plug him in there. Now, a relay's got two circuits. Uh, one is a low amperage switch circuit from inside. So that's this. This is my 12 volt. It's on a key on switch. And that's going to be completed once I ground. If I ground it, now my relay comes alive. I can flow juice through the big wires and feed my fan. Now there's two ways to set one of these up. Uh, my ground wire could be a temp switch. It's basically just a little dead switch. I put it in my cooling circuit. When it gets to temp, it'll ground. Bam, now my circuit works. But in this case, we've got our easy EFI from fast, and it's smart. It's already got a temp sensor. It's following every degree. It's calibrating the engine, fuel, and everything. So it's got an output it's basically a ground as well. So all I gotta do is once I get that mounted, I can run my ground to this wire. Now my computer is running my relay. Pretty simple, pretty basic. I've got a 30 amp fuse in here. This will go to either this, the battery, maybe off the starter or junction block. So I can run nice heavy gauge wire, a fuse. This guy's ready to go pretty soon. This tip is brought to you by autogeek.net. We are car care. All right, we're here again with our detailing expert, Mike Phillips. Now we've already got the car clean, we've got it clay, it's all ready to go, and it's ready for the wax. And you'd be impressed, I've even folded my microfiber towel You're learning. into the four sections. There you go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply Pinnacle Sovereign. This is a premium Carnuba Pace Wax. 
And the reason for this is usually a car is the second most expensive investment you'll make. So it's a good idea to maintain it frequently with a fresh coat of wax. Now what's the difference in a wax and a paint sealant? Okay, now a wax usually contains carnauba and it adds a lot of warmth and depth to the finish. It really brings out the color of the flake and the, the richness of the color. Now to get the wax out of the container, here's a little technique. Take your applicator pad, place it against the wax, and then just spin the container. Don't just goop it in there, like get the big clump and Don't smear just put it, it in there and pull out a big chunk. <laughs> you'll end up with a big chunk of wax and no way to spread it. But by just spinning it like this, what'll happen is you'll liquefy the wax, it'll seep into the wax pad, and that'll make it easy to spread. Now I'm just going to spread this out in straight lines in the direction the wind would blow over the car. And the purpose for that is just in case you get any kind of particulate onto your pad, you won't put circular swirls into the paint. Now you always want to follow a manufacturer's directions for applying and removing a wax. And this is what we actually call a whoa-whoa. That means you whoa, wipe whoa. a whoa-whoa. <laughs> that's not a mistake, that's a technique. <laughs> What is a woo-woo? A woo-woo is where you wipe it on and then you wipe it off. woo 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 -wee. So go ahead and take your microfiber and just gently wipe that wax now off. Now you want to let it dry, right? No, it's wipe on, oh. wipe off. All right. So just wipe it right off. Okay. And it's almost wow. impossible it to make a mistake out. with a product like this. And look how wet the paint looks now. Yeah, that's nice. The Pinnacle Sovereign, it brings out the full richness of color. It, it creates a lot of shimmer, a lot of gloss. It's a beauty wax is what it is. Yeah, that's gorgeous. For more information on this and more detailing tips and techniques, check out autogeek.net and click on Show Car Garage. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Waterloo Industries, storage and organization. Experience life uncluttered. Hey, welcome back. Well, the wiring's going really well. I think I'm gonna put the battery in the trunk. So I'm gonna get a long battery lead and junction block, maybe a few other pieces. So I'm gonna run off and grab some of those parts. Meanwhile, we're gonna take a look at this exhaust, see if we can't get the hot pipes running towards the back. Well, while Bird's piddling around town, I'm gonna to mock up the rear exhaust. And we've got a heartthrob exhaust kit here. This is aluminized steel, so they actually take aluminum and coat the steel, keeps the corrosion down, makes it flow nice. It's two and a half inch tube. And this is their header kit, so if you have some headers, this is a good kit that you can bolt on. And uh, first thing we need to do is just mock up a couple of the front pipes and figure out where they're gonna lay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. All right, I'm gonna put this last piece in. This will get my first two tubes on either side, kind of mocked up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, these are in a straight plane, so I think what I'll do is just put them on the bench, go ahead and weld this, and i give you some tips on kind of a welding aluminized steel. Now, another good tip while you're at it, just go ahead and mark your length. That way, when you pull it off, you know you've got a length. And then I would go ahead and mark right and left. That way, you know for sure, just in case you got some kind of misalignment, just good habit too. All right, we're about ready to weld. Now we've cleaned both of these tubes. And, you know, this aluminum really kind of sucks up the heat. We did some tests where you could weld over it. A lot of guys will do that. But I feel like my weld's turning a lot better if it's clean. So not only did we kind of grind the outside to get rid of some muck, we also took a rag, cleaned out the inside because when they bend these tubes, they use a mandrel. So that mandrel runs through with grease, really gets kind of nasty stuff in there. So now we've got it set. I'm going to go ahead and tack a couple. Now I did a couple of test pieces just to see how it was welding. I'm going to go ahead and get a, get a couple of tacks on. And now that we're ready to weld, I'll just kind of show you how to use a MIG in uh, welding at home, which is what most guys are going to end up using anyway. What I'm doing, I'm actually stitching this weld. You can weld it straight through, or you can make you know more of a consistent puddle type bead. But uh, you know, I just feel like I get a more aesthetically pleasing weld if I just kind of do a stitch. So I'm stitching, looking for the back of the weld to hit half the puddle each time. So trying to make that nice and consistent. 
And uh, you know, you just kind of pretend you're a robot, really move the torch around, keeping the same angle as you spin it around. Usually I'm doing about a quarter of a tube at a time. So I start at one tack where I know I can't see it, spin it around about a quarter tube, flip it over, and do it again. Cool. That's pretty good. I mean, for a MIG, you know, you're never going to make it look as good as a TIG. But you know, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty sweet. So let's get this bolted back in the car and uh, move on to the next piece. All right, about well, got this thing wiggled into place. Now, you know, we'll have a little bit of adjustment, get it all perfectly parallel. The muffler comes with this. It's double walled, which makes it nice and deep. And if you look at this cutaway, you can see it's got a V baffle. That's gonna allow the air to flow through really nice, give it good performance. And when you put it in, be sure you put the inlet side on the inlet. Otherwise, you'll be really upset later. I'm gonna go ahead and put this muffler in. And when we come back, we're gonna finish this baby up. So stay tuned. Welcome back. We're finishing up the exhaust on our Nova project. Now what we've done here, we've kind of got a mock-up uh, bar across. We've measured off the shackle on either side. That gives us kind of a distance and a height so we can make the tips look even. We took a spacer coming off of the tube. Now this gas tank is new, thank goodness. I don't really want to weld right next to a full gas tank, so that's no fun. And, and here's the, the part that comes with the kit. This is a nice rubber hanger and what you get you get a full piece like this. We cut them off. This one we bent, which is just a simple stick it in the vise and hammer it over. I bring it up top and you can see where it fits. So this is the driver's side that's already in. So you got a good couple of inches to weld around the sides, three inches to weld off of the frame. So that looks cool. Now, if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to weld, they also send this kind of kit, this kind of hanger. So you clamp that on. It's got a polyurethane bushing that you can bolt. So that's a good way. This whole kit will go in without welding. So that's pretty cool. But we like to weld, so I'm gonna weld. Now the opposite side, I'm gonna pull over to the driver and we've ground off the aluminized coating and we've ground off the coating off the frame. And I'm gonna get this mocked up and then just go ahead and get it tacked in. So do a little twist. Hey dude, this heartthrob exhaust came out pretty nice, man. Yeah, it went in pretty good. You know, it's kind of a universal fit that slides right in. We did some welding, you didn't really have to. And if you got 62 to 79 Nova, or if you've got 67 to 81 Firebird or Camaro, sweet, bolts right in. Yeah, it looks nice because all the hard bends are done and everything yep. else looks like it slips yep. together pretty okay. nice. So I like these parts runs. I come back, everything's done. Speaking of getting back, stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. Yeah, check this thing out, man. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. Add new style to your truck or SUV with Eurostyle lights. The clear lenses don't diffuse the light, offering a brighter shine for a greater distance than the original. The Euro light uses an ultra clear lens with uniquely styled red reflectors that use the original clear bulbs. The light assembly complies with all federal regulations. Be sure to add a heavy duty headlight harness to ensure maximum light output. The harness draws power directly from your battery as opposed to through your headlight switch. The installation is easy. No splicing or cutting is required. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. With over 30,000 truck parts in stock, you can get the right part at the right price right now. All right, welcome to the break room. We got some good product today. You've seen this before. This is the battery tender from Deltran. This is their waterproof power tender plus. Now, if you're watching this show, you've obviously got toys, you've got a car, you've got a boat, you got an RV, and all you do is plug this in. It's waterproof, it's spark protected. It's got a two year warranty, and that's all you need to know. You plug it in, it takes care of your car, keeps your battery ready, and uh, you don't have to do anything. There's no worry. Did I leave the charger on? Did I leave it off? What's no. going to happen? It's there. It's got a brain. It's got a four-stage charging, so it'll maintain any of your batteries, whether it's absorbed glass mat, your, your leaded, your sealed. It doesn't matter. This guy will take care of it. Make sure your toys are ready to run. 
It's lightweight, it's portable. You can mount it permanently if you want. If you need to, you get some long leads and you can string it anywhere you like. Go get the Waterproof Power Tinder Plus from Deltran Battery Tinder. All right, next up, we got a cool product from Loctite. Pocket friendly, portable, toolbox friendly. And what it is, is a Quick Tape 249 series. It's a tape, not a liquid. Everybody so, knows the liquid. Yeah, and we use it on everything. It's great to lock down all your fasteners, keep things from coming loose. But this new form is fantastic because it's dry. All you have to do is roll it around the threads like that. And that guy is ready to go. But I don't make any messes. It's great to carry around your pocket or toolbox. And you can do all your fasteners at once. It's not going to dry on you until you install it. Once it's installed and it's buried between the threads with a lack of oxygen, that's when it kicks off and hardens. Yep, it's the same blue formula as the liquid, but like he said, you can line up your entire set of parts and you can have this on the road, throw it in your pocket, and you're, you're always ready to roll. So that's yeah. a great product from Loctite. It's their Quick Tape 249 series. All right, next cool product is from AMK Products Inc. Now this is a master fastener kit. Yeah, now each one of these kits comes with dozens of individual kits. So if you're gonna do a res you know, resto or you're gonna do anything on your car, like a rebuild, you're gonna be chasing you know, all these fasteners oh, man, all over dude. the place. They're either gonna be rusty, or you know, if you're gonna clean them up and take all that time, now you gotta remember which fastener goes where because you usually put them in one bin as you're doing all your clean. Sure, and you can look through these, you can see here's the hood levelers, you've got your uh, door latches. I mean, any of them, they're labeled. It's gonna save you so much time. These are a high quality part and a lot of these are actually made by the original mold, the original manufacturer that had it on that car. They've got all the same specs from strength to the finish on them. Like you said, just the, the look and feel of each of the fastener heads. So you're going to be able to do a proper restoration. You're going to be able to do it quick and easy. And they've got great coatings on them with an additional wax coating for a second barrier. So good to go, make it nice and simple, get that car looking nice. Yep, check out their master fastener kit. That's from AMK Products. All right, well, out of time. We gotta go again. I know it goes fast, but you know, that's how it is. Time to go back to work. We'll see you guys. See ya.